Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series with another tier list regarding the technologies as well as kind of talking about heuristics for when to research them, when they're good, this type of stuff, and an explanation of all the tech. Um, for this video we've selected 26 technologies, all the tier 2 technologies and most of the tier 1 technologies. Um, the format of this video is going to be at the very beginning. We're going to be talking about the background situation and context that have kind of inform how you pick which tech to research. Then we will be talking about about um, doing the entire tier list itself and then maybe in the last five to eight ish minutes going to be doing a summary of all of the picks and why they are starting at top s down to bottom d and so if you're looking to just get kind of the quick and dirty you could skip to maybe the last five to eight minutes of the video i will look into um putting in timestamps but i currently don't know how to do this so when i figure that out i will probably be getting all that game you know what i mean so but let's jump into our explanation of kind of the background consideration and the biggest one is there are tier lists and i don't mean tier lists like the one we were just looking at i mean there are tiers different tiers of tech so this is a tier three tech a tier four tech the most important thing to understand when researching technology is that uh, for every tech you have that not currently researched in a given tier so for example in this time or in this case, in our production tab, we are in tier four. We have several tier four techs not researched. For every single one not researched, you incur a malice uh, to researching the next tier beyond it, which means that very often the, what the strategy is in Victoria 3 is going to be kind of picking and choosing the very best techs from each tier and then relying on natural spread to get kind of the worst techs. This is what you do for most countries. Uh, if you are an extremely strong country, this means you can go ahead of time in tech very often because you only get access to the natural spread if other people have technologies research that you don't. And if you are currently at the bleeding edge and you have every tech that everyone else does, you will not benefit from your natural spread. So when you're playing a high tech country, you will more often want to go ahead of time in research and sometimes violate this rule. And then if you are kind of behind, you will never ever want to violate this rule and you will never want to research, you know, a tier five tech when you have tier four techs waiting the other thing is that there's kind of th maybe each tab is kind of good in during a different phase of the game um or this is my perception although there's some argumentation for the military tab in the very early game production tab is best and so generally speaking you will be trying to either uh, rush for railways or pick up um, technologies such as lathe which gives you access to pms which switch you from being merchant guild owned to privately owned in a lot of buildings and this is going to be important because um, capitalists provide uh, much they provide four times as much contribution to the investment pool as um, shopkeepers do so you see here we have shopkeepers with the very base pms we swap swap to die workshops which you acquire with lathes and we switch to privately owned which has capitalists and so in the broader context of uh, evaluating society tech as a whole often the the very early society tech is going to suffer just because the very early production tech is good the mid game society tech tends to be quite strong and the late game military tech is quite strong this is my perception although if you are starting out as a great power military tech becomes a lot stronger throughout the entire phase of the game generally speaking you should just dodge fights with stronger people um, through most phases of the game and so mil tech becomes less important with a couple exceptions but this isn't a mil tech video this is a society tech video so without further ado let's jump into the tier list and talk about first we're going to talk about law enforcement now law enforcement isn't the first in alphabetical order but what law enforcement does is it unlocks dedicated police force uh it unlocks national militia it gives you plus one to uh the max law uh level and it also unlocks censorship and so um, law enforcement is a good example of a, uh, of a tech that in a vacuum might be good, but is actually quite, quite bad on our tier list, and we're going to put it at D. Dedicated police force might be the best law for police force. However, uh, as far as institutions go, there's three institutions that are really good early game. That's colonization, um, uh, guaranteed liberties, although guaranteed liberties you need a tech in order to get it, and then also... Um, schools in general and so uh because you are not going to have a ton of institutions at the start and you're not going to be putting in institutions and law enforcement in particular doesn't lead into any other techs you're almost never going to want to pick and research law enforcement specifically unless you really really want dedicated police force in which case uh you do this when you're conquering a bunch of land you can quickly incorporate but this is kind of it 
Next, we're going to talk about academia, uh, academia or academics, which we are going to put in B tier. And we're going to jump into the game and talk about both very quickly. So law enforcement, in particular, it doesn't lead in, into anything here, which is one of the reasons why you never research it. Also, a lot of countries just start out with it anyways. Academia, a lot of westernized countries start out with it, and a lot of unwesternized ones don't. It gives you 0.5 wealth per education, or education access per wealth. Uh, it uh, allows you to get uh, universities, and it allows private, uh, if I'm not mistaken, private education or private schools. Now, very early on, you are not going to be wanting to build a ton of universities. And the reason being is that you are going to generally be wanting to ramp up construction. However, you can research academia um, and build the three universities to do the journal entry for academia. But for the most part, the best part of this is the wealth education access because you don't want to build a ton of schools right when we, you're getting academia. However, if you somehow don't get academia and you're done with the most essential production tech, academia is really, really good to research. And private schools is also pretty good. Um, so let's jump back into our thing and talk about the next one. So the next one is going to be international trade. And this one's particularly important. Uh, we're going to put it in A tier. And we're going to talk about it. What this tech does, or what it unlocks specifically, is it unlocks uh, your ability to research laws that are particularly good. Namely, it allows you access to laissez-faire, which is very strong. And so what... International trade is really, really strong in the context of when you can go to uh, laissez-faire or when laissez-faire becomes good. International trade is 100% the first tech you want to be researching. But before then, it's not so good. It also gives you mercantilism, which can be good for swapping off of isolationism. However, generally speaking, the better way to swap off of isolationism is to start a war with a great power. They'll demand to open your market and then you just back down. Um, but if you don't want to do it the gamey way, you will need international trade. Most countries have it researched at the start. It also unlocks embargo, which is a particularly useful trade agreement, which is somewhat useful, and customs unions, which is kind of useful, but uh, international trade or building a customs union is not going to be that viable until you research central banking. And so all of these together, uh, it's going to be a tech that is situationally be you, you just have to research it, which is why it gets an A, but it's not going to be super frequent that that's the case. And also most countries start out with international trade anyways. Let's jump back into the browser. Next, we're going to talk about centralization, which we are going to put, be putting at the top of B tier. Now, centralization gives you access to several things. It gives you access to a better PM for your government administrations. It gives you access to paved roads. And it also gives you access to... Let's jump in here. It gives you uh, extra home affairs uh, capacity or extra tax capacity, home affairs, max institution investment. As we said, the filing cabinets PM, the road maintenance decree, which is particularly strong, emergency relief decree, and promote national values. Now, the thing we are focused on here is road maintenance. And the specific context where centralization is very good, which is, by the way, it's a tech that most countries start out with. But if you are playing a single province uh, country, road maintenance is insane and so if you're playing a low kind of uh if you're playing a single province country and you want to put in road maintenance what it's going to give you is plus one infrastructure per 100k population which again if you're on a single province and you don't have railroads infrastructure is great 20 maximum infrastructure from population also great and this is the key part 10 percent state construction efficiency if you're only building in one state state construction efficiency is absolutely insane and so that's why this one is particularly important in the specific context of if you are playing a single province country if you are not this one's not really that important maybe it shouldn't score so high in b tier we're gonna leave it here we might move it back down but the the important thing to appreciate is mainly the context of that but also you know being able to swap from being simple organization to filing cabinets is nice but you won't always have like paper or like feel like moving into paper just for filing cabinets very often you won't until you build schools or you have quite a few uh government administrations and so uh for this reason we're gonna score it at a b but a very high b 
It is contextually going to be like the very best tech in the world. Next, international relations. This allows you to get alliances, defensive packs, and rivalries. None of these are particularly important at the very start of the game. You, the rivalry is very, very nice for doing getting influence, but alliances and defensive packs, man, the AI actually is like weird and funky in alliances. Anyways, I don't think they're very good. Uh, defensive packs are not a very good use of, uh, you know, your influence, and rivalries are actually excellent for expanding influence. But before you get centralized banking, and before it's really easy to expand your customs union it's not very good so we're going to put international relations in d tier doesn't do a whole lot if i'm not mistaken mass communications um only gives you some authority but we're going to take a look at it and we're also going to talk about medical decrees in the same jump into the game now mass uh mass communications here Gives you 10% authority. At the start of the game, this is going to give you an enormous amount of authority, because often you have a lot more authority at the start of the game, especially if you're playing a country that doesn't start with mass communication. But you don't really have all that much to spend authority on very effectively. Generally speaking, the consumption taxes don't yield you a whole bunch. It's not really going to be that good a tech. Um, medical degrees unlocks charity hospitals in the health system, and it also gives you plus one max health system investment. However, um, we, as we discussed earlier, you know the three institutions that are really good early are going to be the uh, guaranteed liberties, uh, colonization, and also, well, law enforcement is probably better than hospitals, but also education. And so because it's not quite what you want in terms of institutions, especially early, it's not going to be very good. Now, it does lead you on the train to pharmaceuticals and quinine, which maybe we'll talk about here as well, because they're kind of very similar. Or the main reason, sh reason you research medical degrees is the same reason you research pharmaceuticals, which is to get into quinine. And so we'll talk about this one again plus one max health in system investment it locks private health insurance and it gives unlocks private uh, public health insurance pharmaceuticals is a little bit better than medical degrees i think because the pms for it are or i think that public health insurance is a little bit better i think that overall you want to kneecap the devout as an interest group so you don't want the charity hospitals and the reason to do charity hospitals is because you unlock them really early but it's not a very good institution early and so it just leaves me thinking you know pharmaceuticals is a little bit better but they're still both bad quinine is strong because it allows you to colonize faster it allows you to colonize uh malaria uh provinces at normal speed the probably most important of which being Kenya, which gives you access to all of these soft malaria only territory. And so because of that, this is going to be an extremely strong tech if you are trying to push the colonization game, which is context dependent. Your colonization speed is based on your incorporated population. And so the more incorporated pops you have, the better colonization gets as a thing. It is extremely strong. Um, when you have a really high population, it's actually the very strongest institution when you have an enormous population. Very often on China, you just want to implement one institution early, and that institution is colonization, because it is uh, proportionally more useful, you know, the more pop you have um, relative to other institutions. And so let's jump back into the ratings and put all of these texts or that we just talked about in kind of their own place. So we talked about mass communication, really not that useful, 10% authority, we're going to put it in here. We talked about quinine, quinine is going to be S tier, but a contingent S tier, perhaps it belongs at the front of A tier. It is a tech that you sometimes research medical degrees, which is not particularly good. And pharmaceuticals, you research these two texts to just to get into quinine. And so quinine is one of the few texts in here that you are researching other texts in just to be able to research quinine because it can be so strong for helping out with that colonization early. And so, you know, you you get your production texts that are particularly important and then you go right into, you know, medical degrees, pharmaceuticals, quinine, this type of play pattern. And so quinine, I feel, has to be S tier, but it's perhaps belongs in a high A because it's not as consistently super good, but when it's really good, you're researching other texts just to do it. Romanticism is an interesting one here. Let's jump into the game to talk about it. So romanticism is one that I have an evaluation of that I'm not very sure of. And I just want to be kind of clear of this. I'm very open to changing my mind. But currently, I think romanticism is just a bad tech. And what I mean by bad tech, I mean, I think you would rather not research it if you could early on. If this is the one that last natural spreads to you, you... 
you're very happy. What it gives you is 5% prestige, which is a bit of a nothing burger. Unlocks Arts Academy, we'll come back to that. Unlocks Agrarianism, which Agrarianism sucks anyways. And you just kind of want to go laissez-faire interventionalism, so you want to be more up in this bizzle. Uh, and it gets unlocks Green and Grass campaigns, which is, uh, it's fine, it's okay. But the thing is, Arts Academies, um, your auto queue will build a ton of arts academies and my perception is that the arts academies are bad um at least when you have the initial pm because they will be landowner owned and they will contribute clout to the landowners and they will be you know they will be fairly profitable and it's just something you would rather not have in your market kind of early on and you would rather your auto queue prioritize resources or prioritize buildings that are owned by capitalists and the arts academy gives them a profitable outlet uh for stuff that is owned by uh the landowners or is owned by the aristocrats so what i mean let's just kind of jump into something here i'm pretty sure well it's probably faster to find this here we are going to find ourselves an arts academy and show you what i mean in West Java here, we're going to go to traditional art and traditional patronage, and we will see with traditional patronage, there are academics owned, so to some degree empowering the academics is nice and like it helps to do this, but it also is aristocrat owned, and so uh, it's going to not contribute too much to the investment pool, especially because academics don't contribute at all to the investment pool, and what you are all about super early on is ramping up construction, getting a really big investment pool, and using it to ramp up construction, and so for this reason, um, I think tentatively the tech is just bad like you would rather not research it uh you would rather it not natural spread to you early but this is also one that i think i need to experiment a lot with and i'm not really sure on it could maybe be medium it could even be good but for now we're gonna put it at the very very back bottom f tier uh with a very low degree of confidence that it belongs here Next up is empiricism, which is actually quite strong. We're going to look at both empiricism and stock exchange, and then we're going to rank them. So empiricism. Oop, in here. Empiricism unlocks several things that are all very good. It gives you that 5% or 0.05% wealth ac uh, education access. It gives you 10% influence, which isn't very strong early. But one of the reasons for academia is that 5% or 0.5%. You get that same juice with empiricism here. It unlocks total separation, which in the multiculturalism total separation metagame is going to be pretty strong. But it's not super essential early on. Um, if you just leave uh, empiricism to not spread to you, that's super okay because um, you're not going to be able to get multiculturalism anywhere near this point in time, but it is a nice one to be able to pass. It unlocks public schools, which for a lot of countries, countries without a very high standard of living or without a lot of wealth, public schools is going to be really good because it gives uh, education access independent of wealth, whereas private schools are going to give education in uh, based on wealth. And then, of course, religious schools just give flat, but it is going to be, it is going to empower the religious folks, so you don't want that. And it also unlocks the Liberal Party, which is kind of important if you're switching on to a voting system. You generally want to have a Liberal Party, otherwise it's just going to be like rural folk versus, um, what is it, landowners or conservatives. Um, a lot of countries start out with this, a lot of them don't. We are going to put it in, we are going to put it on the back burner for now. And we're going to talk about stock exchange. Now, stock exchange is one that's incredibly useful to research early, mainly because of the Corn Laws event chain. The Corn Laws event chain, uh, by exporting grain, you trigger it. You can find it in your journal at the start of the game. We don't have it anymore because we're not in the beginning of the game. But what Corn Laws will allow you to do is it'll allow you to get a market liberal landowner, which makes passing all of the best kind of trading uh, and market system laws. It'll let you go laissez-faire, free trade, and also abolish serfdom. Now this is important because uh, in here we have free trade. So as soon as you pass that in, stock exchange is actually going to be one of the techs you research very, very earliest to kind of lock in the fact that you can do free trade while you have um, the market liberal of your landowners. And so it's time is of the essence to some degree because eventually that guy dies. Uh, corn laws are very, very strong. And free trade is extremely strong too because you can really manipulate what your auto queue is building uh, with free trade uh, because you can import all the landowner based stuff and force your country to go more capitalist based stuff and this is good because the aristocrats only contribute half as much to the investment pool as the capitalists and so this tech is very 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 strong uh, 
It also unlocks the free trade party, which is often going to be, you know, the party that your market liberal will be in. It unlocks protectionism, that's kind of whatever. And then also the decreased trade route bureaucracy cost and trade route competitiveness is also very strong, although it is a subtle effect. And so we are going to jump back into our uh, thing over here. Wait. There we go. We're going to jump back into our browser and rank them. For empiricism, we are going to put it mm, kind of either at the top of B tier. Let's put it at the top of B tier. Um, it is going to be good. Uh, it allows you to unlock, uh, you know, public education, which is oft, very often the best. And it's one of the good institutions to put in early. And this is the main reason to research. It also gives free education access based on wealth. And we're going to put stock exchange at the top of A tier here. Stock exchange is going to be one that you definitely want to research and get onto free trade because it is extremely strong. All right, and the next up is currency standards. And currency standards is a very, very straightforward tech. It is one you research very, very, very often, um, kind of uh, when you can. What it does is it locks per capita taxation. Let's jump into the game and talk about per capita taxation or take a look at per capita taxation because I think it's worth doing here. So for per capita taxation, we go from land-based taxation, which is a tax based on land that primarily taxes aristocrats and doesn't tax very well into manufactories. So when the serfs come out off their turf and they go into the cities and they work in the factories, they don't really pay taxes. You also have the 4% income tax rate. That's virtually nothing. And the consumption tax rate, which is consistent for every tax system. Here, we decrease the land tax and we add a per capita tax for just everyone. And then also the income tax rate increases by an enormous margin. We go from 4% to 2%. I believe we're on super low taxes. Uh, so it'll be even larger for most countries. But this is going to be, for almost everyone switching on to per capita taxation is going to be more profitable unless you basically only have farms and subsistence farms and huge populations. And so this tech is going to be extremely strong early on. And very often, as soon as per capita taxation makes sense, you know, in terms of like what you can research. And as soon as you have, if you need to make a rush for railroads and production, you do that. But as soon as you have that stuff, currency standards is the one to look at. So currency standards here goes at the very top of S. And I, uh, I don't think it's, uh, I think it's actually close, actually. I think it's close between that one and the next one. And the next one is colonization. So if you are specific, the reason why currency standards, I'm going to score higher than colonization, which jumping back in to talk about colonization, um, we are going to, the colonization is extremely strong. If you have a country that's good for it, it gives you max colonization uh, investment and locks colonial resettlement, colonial exploitation, and Suez Canal. But what it does is allows you to colonize. Colonizing is an extremely strong mechanic, and it is extremely strong for, again, to reiterate, uh, when you have a large incorporated population, colonization is insane. The few times where you would research colonization ahead of currency standards, when you can comfortably pass per capita taxation is when you have an absolutely huge population and you want to get onto colonialization ASAP. And so for very large countries, colonization becomes the number one thing, but it's like contingently the number one, whereas currency standards is always going to be good. Colonization is sometimes just straight up awful. If you have a really small population, it's just really not going to do a whole lot of anything. And so you just leave it off to the side. Although you do have a lot of excess bureaucracy, generally when you have a small population, just because of how things roll out and so we're going to put colonization right after currency standards next up is going to be banking and so we'll talk about that and central banking here because they're very similar banking gives 10 percent minting and minus loan interest rates this is going to be stronger on uh what is it westernized countries or what it recognized countries because the loan interest rate is particularly useful for deficit spending you generally don't don't want a deficit on unrecognized countries and you want a deficit spend on recognized countries very often once you pass laissez-faire which you want to do um minting is gives you uh, a set amount of money based on your gdp and gold mines so if we hover here and we hover over the minting we will say we're making 1.7 million 865k of that is from our GDP here and a huge chunk of that is from our gold mines in no West Borneo, North Borneo and uh, Dutch East Indies Guyana. If you are playing specifically a country that has a lot of gold like Mexico or Transvaal, banking becomes extremely strong. 
If you're not playing one of those countries, it's just kind of a medium tech. You don't really want to research it out for yourself. It's like, eh, but it's contextually very, very strong if you have access to gold. Central banking is very similar, and it can be researched almost immediately after with the caveat that banking is tier one, central banking is tier two. So very often you're going to want to research all the tier one techs before you get into central banking, but also very often banking is kind of the last one you research. Central banking, same deal with the minting and loan interest rates, so exact same bonus as banking. And so, but it also allows you to take on debt and do bankrolls. So when you want to expand your market with bankrolls, central banking gives you access to that. So let's jump back into our browser here and rank the things. So colonization scores right after currency standards. It is contextually better than currency standards, but these are kind of the three texts that you rush. And these are the three, these are the three gotta have it texts, shortly followed by stock exchange, which is also going to be one of those. Banking is contingent and is very strong sometimes, and central banking, as we talked about, kind of fits the similar bill here. Um, but it is going to be situationally useful. And you'll notice a kind of trend here for the society text where a lot of them are middling. This is contextually quite good. And a lot of them are just awful. Modern sewage gives you extra infrastructure. We're going to put it in here and we're going to take a look at it in a second. And postal savings gives you a larger cap on the total number of wealth you can store, which you don't want to be storing wealth. And it also gives you more investment pool transfer from farmers and a different group, which you kind of don't want to be leaning on anyways. So we're going to put that below mass communication because the authority is going to be a little bit better. And then we're going to take a closer look at modern sewage and postal savings in it jumping into the thing so modern sewage it gives you more infrastructure it's contextually useful it also gives you extra land trade capacity which is sometimes extremely useful but generally is not often uh five construction sector max level which again if you're on a one state country modern sewage becomes a godsend because sometimes you actually cap out your construction center it gives you more infrastructure which is always a little bit nice especially if you are paying a really large subsidy for your railroads for whatever reason modern sewage can kind of help uh dull the pain a little bit and it's just kind of infrastructure it's pretty nice it's it's nice on almost everyone which is why it kind of scores okay okay but it's almost never something you want to rush especially because it's a start of tier two tech and it's not like the end of tier two and so um you are often going to have, there's going to be something better in tier two probably for whatever you're doing but okay postal savings again it gives you maximum cash reserves which is not a particularly useful modifier unless it applies to uh well, so this will actually, this will do a couple things. It will increase your, um, the max amount you can hold, and it'll also increase your credit, but you almost never want to go up to the credit maximum anyways. And so it's still not very good, but it increasing your credit line is somewhat useful. It makes it harder to accidentally bankrupt yourself. Um, but this is a deficit spending thing that's like somewhat nuanced. Generally, you're not going to be getting much from farmers because they don't own any buildings at the start and you are trying to switch off of shopkeepers. So this is not going to be very useful. We already ranked those. And so now we're going to talk about central archives and nationalism, which are going to be the next two. Central archives is actually quite useful sometimes. In that, well, so the tax capacity is nice on its own. And the secret police, I don't think is particularly good uh, for internal security because I think that, um, what is it? Uh, guaranteed liberty is extremely strong. But getting standardized filing system on the government administrations is pretty good. Uh, what it will do is it'll generally allow you to, you know, input an institution going from simple organization or sorry, going from filing cabinets to standardized filing systems going to give you a ton more bureaucracy. And very often this bump um, will allow you to, in the early game, it's going to allow you to focus on expanding construction and not on expanding admins. Or it's going to allow you to input that institution that you were wanting to go. So let's say you are maybe have 100 construction or so and you're looking to focus mainly on increasing construction or building construction materials and you also want to input education in your country. What you can do is you can first go for the filing system, uh, the one that gives you standardized filing system, and then after that uh, you can go for passing the the 
the education law that you particularly want, and this is a way to input education without having to construct anything. And so in that specific context, central archives and that specific play pattern, central archives is very good. Um, but other than that, it's, uh, well, I mean, like, that's what it's about. So uh, specifically just increasing the efficiency. It's also actually going to be just generally better the higher your SOL gets, because the higher that your SOL gets, the larger proportion wages matter. And so one of the things, ways to like kind of look at government administrations in general is you'll notice here we're paying a ton out for wages and a little bit out for paper and we can increase its efficacy in terms of uh, the increase that you get uh, from on the institution for the increased bureaucracy and tax capacity is more valuable the higher a wage you are paying everyone because when you're paying a really high wage it is a much larger proportion you know relative to the paper in terms of your costs that you're incurring on the government and so it's also going to be generally it's going to be better when you have already have a ton of government administrations and if you have your standard of living high for whatever reason next we're going to talk about nationalism nationalism is contextually important it gets ethno state which you don't want to do but it also gives you 10 percent authority which is like okay well why is it contextually good nationalism unlocks some journal entries and some event chains for some countries um like it's important for forming germany type stuff uh for the uk it allows you to start consolidating the states uh under canada and australia and this sort of thing so it is contextually uh useful so let's jump into the ratings and put these guys in their place so central archives is situationally useful i think it is situationally useful a little bit more often than central banking but a little bit less than academia although academia most countries start off with it and nationalism we're going to put at the back of b tier well no we're going to put it here in c tier overall the tech itself is not very good but sometimes you want to research it to push journal entry and this sort of stuff but for the most part it's it's not going to be the very best you also need it to um do uh, do some nation formation and stuff but very often you're not forming nor nations at this like point in the game so like okay next up we're going to talk about egalitarianism and realism so let's jump into the game so we can talk about it a little bit better so egalitarianism is quite a good one here what it does is it unlocks uh, extra social security investment. It does have the malice minimum expected standard of living from literacy. It unlocks universal suffrage, which you probably don't want to implement this early. It unlocks proportional taxation, which you, uh, you often can't put in at this point in the game. But if you can put it in, boy, do you want to go with egalitarianism and put it in. And it also unlocks the radical party, which allows radicals to form. And so it's got kind of several things going on here. But the very, very key one, or the most important one, is the proportional taxation. And so sometimes egalitarianism will be very, very strong. It unlocks your ability to get radicals. But the reason why radical is good, or the radical ideology is good, is if you have human rights, which you see is going from a tier 2 tech to a tier 3 tech. So you can't always do it right away. But if you are going to go human rights, you know, uh, it can make sense to maybe try and go egalitarianism like three texts prior to it to just hope you manage to pip uh, a radical so that you can go multiculturalism but it's really about this proportional taxation specifically in the context where you have a really uh, powerful trade unionist which is the only interest group that supports this tax system it's going to be very good let's just take a quick look at the tax system and then we'll come back here so proportional taxation will give more tax on based on income it will start uh, taxing consumption tax rate and it will start uh, taxing or yeah consumption all is already taxed it'll tax dividends and income and it will be importantly 50% more income tax so what this is going to do is it is going to increase the tax rate on the upper strata such that the upper strata are paying more taxes and the lower strata are paying less and without going too much into it having your lower strata standard of living really high is really good and having your upper strata standard of living really high doesn't do anything for you lower strata high standard of living what it will do is it will uh increase migration attraction by a whole lot upper strata will not do this you will always have pops to fill the upper strata needs and so you can 
care about the lower strata uh, standard of living a lot more. And so not only does this let you get more money uh, in proportional taxation, but it also kind of helps to drive migration and this sorts of stuff. It taxes in the right way. And so egalitarianism is very strong in that specific situation, but you often won't be in that situation at this point in the game. Realism, uh, we'll just talk about it really quick. Uh, it gives you plus five prestige. It gives you uh, realistic arts for Arts Academy, so boost the Arts Academy. It gives you independent artists and bougie patronage for the Arts Academy. And this tech specifically can be quite good um, because what it will do is it will allow you to switch from this traditional patronage, which is a lot of capitalists, to bougie patronage, which is, or sorry, a lot of aristocrats to bougie patronage, which is a lot of capitalists, which will improve the transfer rate uh, based on the profitability of the building. It also gives you realist art, uh, which is a bit more efficient. And you can also just straight up go independent artists, which will make it all academics. If you are trying to juice up the academia or the intelligentsia clout, this will be useful. But for the most part, you go bougie patronage for the investment pool transfer that you get off of it. And so let's rank these. The, the being able to swap off of being the aristocrat owned, I think, or mostly off of the aristocrat owned, I think is the primary benefit of this. And so let's get into the rankings. Initially, when I did this tier list by myself, I had egalitarianism up here in A tier. And I don't quite think it's that good, but I do think it is pretty good. We're going to put it at the top of B tier with the understanding that this is extraordinarily good in a very narrow context. It's extraordinarily good when you have a really strong trade unionist early in the game when you have egalitarianism as an option, which is quite rare, but sometimes it happens. Realism, we're going to put at the back of B tier. If you somehow have an enormous amount of uh, arts academies, which tends to be how you know your investment pool can build a lot if you have a very stratified economy if you have really really wealthy people and really really poor people um you create a large demand for art and so the auto queue will build a lot of art and so getting this to swap it to a pm that's more in fa uh more effective for the investment pool transfer is going to be quite effective next we're going to take a look at dialectic psychiatry and organized uh sports i think that is so let's take oh no uh meant to swap this over here i apologize i'm not going to restart the video over this because we're already 35 minutes deep but i did put the guys in place so i put let's 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 rewind and pretend we redid it so uh imperial or sorry egalitarianism i initially had an a tier but i felt that it should move back to down to here and then uh for Man, I'm so miffed at myself. I gotta just keep going. Okay, and then realism, we're gonna put at the back of B tier here. Um, sorry about that. Uh, but overall, you'll notice kind of the trend. There's a lot of useless tech. There's a lot of situational tech. There's only a, a few uh, like exceptional tech here. Uh, and we're about to talk about dialectics, organized uh, sports, and psychiatry. So let's jump in. Ah. Okay. All right, so dialectics will give you max education investment, which is pretty good. It will also unlock philosophy department, which is more effective uh, PM. Um, so we'll talk about that. Psychiatry, it gives you minus bureaucracy co population cost po population cost multiplier. This is good on countries that have enormous population, but on countries that have an enormous population, generally you're behind on tech anyways, and you generally want to prioritize production tech, and so you like never research this. It also gives you 10% influence at a point in the game where influence is not particularly good. It's kind of whatever. Organized sports plus 10% prestige. Getting this 10% prestige juice will almost never bump you up to the next tier, which is what is useful about prestige. And so as a consequence, you never research organized sports, especially never ever because it doesn't lead into anything. So let's put these on the thing and let's remember to swap over here instead of just doing it off to the side. So dialectics is going to be quite good uh, and it's going to be situation or well, it's always going to be kind of medium good. The reason I'm scoring it down here um, is that 
So here's the thing, is uh, the PM for the philosophy uh, schools is not going to be tremendously useful when you can first research dialectics, but it will be useful kind of when you're starting to get into the later tier three tech, but this is a tier two tech. The reason why is early on you're focused mainly on expanding construction and less on the schools. And so getting a new PM for the schools is not as effective when you don't have a lot of universities early on. It's kind of like academics, which is like, uh, evaluating the university kind of lower than maybe it ought like university is a really important building but it's not as important in the early phases of the game when you're trying to expand construction all right psychiatry is it kind of gives a little bit of stuff uh specifically it's good if you have really large population but if you have really large population you're probably researching other things so we'll put it here and so for organized sports we'll put it ahead of romanticism which i think is actively bad and then the last tech we have to talk about here is labor movement so let's jump into the game and come on over to labor movement so labor movement's got a few things going on it gives uh plus minimum expected standard of li uh, living from literacy which is bad increase in max workplace safety office institution investment <coughs> You will almost never, never, never at this. Actually, I have never at this point in the game uh, increased workplace safety past level one. And so this is kind of does nothing positive. It gives you restricted child labor in the laws, which will allow you to increase um, the institution for education by one, which is useful. It'll unlock regulatory bodies, which is kind of a shrug. It will unlock wage subsidies, which you don't want to implement. And it will unlock the Social Democratic Party, which can often give you a more legitimate government. But overall, what we're here for is the uh, increased public schools. And it notably is kind of one of the later tier two techs. And so, although it comes straight down here, um, it's, it's okay. It's not tremendous. Um, we're going to come back into the browser. We're going to click the browser and make sure not to make that mistake again. And we're going to put labor movement um, here under dialectics. Oop but above nationalism. So labor movement, it's, uh, it allows you to input more education, but it is probably not something you are rushing. And you, if you are kind of trying to increase the education a lot or your text research rate a lot, dialectics is probably gonna be a little bit better. I mean, maybe sometimes you just wanna increase the institution. It's pretty close. These kind of do similar things. I guess maybe labor movements is slightly better because it unlocks the party as well. Um, but this is good, just gives you more innovation if you're trying to crank the innovation, where this gives you the lagging effect of education, access, and literacy. So why don't we put dialectics here? Because you might be engaging in a strategy where you're planning to build up a ton of universities, in which case this is going to be good. And this is kind of, meh. It's a, it, education is a very important institution, but you're probably not pushing it um, tremendously at this phase in the game. Uh, I, I really actually don't, I don't know which one should be next, but we're going to go through the summary now. So now we are starting the summary. I'm going to say the word summary very, uh, several times so that that way the algorithm says summary when it creates the auto, uh, <laughs> when it creates the automatic, uh, sections, because I've said summary so many times, it's probably going to be like, Hey, this looks like a summary. So to summarize, currency standards is the best. Um, you can input per capita taxation very often. It gives you per capita taxation. The industrials support per capita taxation. The landowners oppose it. It's easy to put in per capita taxation. And so it's gonna give you a ton more money and it's a lot stronger. It's taxing your people in a more efficient way. That's gonna increase migration, et cetera, et cetera. Mostly et cetera. It's gonna be the strongest tech because it is consistently the best. When colonization is best, it is going to be the absolute best. It is good when you have a large incorporated population because it allows you to colonize at a much greater speed. Quinine allows you to increase the colonization level, and it also allows you to uh, colonize heavy malaria land and colonize regular malaria land at a nice speed. Uh, quinine is one of the few texts that you will actually research two other texts just to get into, and those two texts are pharmaceuticals as well as Where's the doctory one? Medical degrees. Okay, stock exchange is going to be particularly useful because it unlocks free trade. Very often you are going to use the corn laws to get a market liberal on your landowner. And stock exchange will allow you to input free trade and um, 
this is kind of the main uh, point of it. It will also make your trading a little bit more effective. Free trade is really strong for a number of reasons. Being able to import the landowner goods at a higher rate helps you to encourage your economy to build entirely capitalist stuff. So this is going to be good. International trade is going to be one that is quite good, but is also... Uh, how should I say? It is good. It gives you laissez-faire is the biggest thing, which is if you are in a position to want to go laissez-faire, you 100% want to research this immediately. The problem with this tech, and maybe why it should score lower, is very often you are not going to be wanting to go laissez-faire at a time when you can research this tech. But if you want to, if you can, then you go it because laissez-faire is best. It will also unlock uh, mercantilism, which if you do not want to ab abuse the fact that as an isolated kingdom, or sorry, kingdom, as an isolated nation, um, you can just declare war on Great Britain, and then when they put in the war goal to open your market, you just back down. Um, this is how you open your market. You don't go mercantilism. If you don't want to use that gamey thing of backing back down, then international trade becomes good. I kind of don't like it. Um, empiricism gives you access to public education. It increases uh, access to education based on wealth. And it also... Oh, what's the other thing? Let's jump into the game and quickly look. So the other thing is unlock public schools. Oh, it also gives you total separation. Total separation is meta, but the problem with total separation is it's not going to be necessary because you can't go multiculturalism super early. So empiricism, you sometimes go it when you want to get the best education system for a lot of countries, which is public education, and this is why you go it. But this is kind of where it's at for that. Egalitarianism is situationally, it's very similar to currency standards. It unlocks proportional taxation and it does a couple other things. It allows you to get radicals, the radical interest group or ideology, which is useful. But mainly proportional taxation, extremely strong. The problem is you need a strong trade unionist. If you have a straight tra trade unionist, egalitarianism is tier, tier one. If you don't, uh, it's like down here or something. So this is kind of a good way to evaluate it. Uh, centralization it would be really good, except you're trying to research other stuff when you can research it. It gives you access to a better um, thing for your government administrations, but most notably, it gives you access to uh, road maintenance, which if you are on a single state country, uh, this is tremendous because it gives you 10% construction efficiency. So centralization is contextually hyper, hyper, hyper good, but is very often not that good. Academia is very often not a tech you research because um, you don't want to build universities early on. But when you get to the point where you want to start building universities, it's extremely strong. It also unlocks pi private education here. Um, and it's one that suffers from the production tech being better than the society tech early on. Otherwise, this would be one of the ones you kind of go early. It's a tier one tech. You're mainly focused on production. You generally not spread academia to yourselves. It also gives you 0.5 ed uh, education, uh, wealth-based education access, which is quite nice. Uh, for central archives, what this does is it unlocks a PM uh, for your government administration. It also gives see you secret police but the main one is the pm on the education um it also gives you i think increased uh like taxing capacity but the big one is the increase the new pm uh this is going to be especially good the higher your standard of living is because that will be a higher normal wage so you have to pay more to your bureaucrats anyways and so uh when you are putting in more um getting more government administration because you're putting in more paper without increasing the labor. This is more beneficial when you have a lot of labor. But what this will often do is a very common play pattern is to go uh, central arts and then go, you know, egalitarianism immediately after. So you can get the bureaucracy in order to put in the education, uh, the, the public schools, you know, this type of thing, or sorry, empiricism. I meant and so it's going to be a very common play pattern where you're kind of waiting for stuff to not spread and you're like hey i want to put in a new institution i'm going to go to central archives banking and central banking both give you minting and give you minus loan interest rate this is going to be extremely strong in kind of two contexts it's going to be a little bit strong when you're deficit spending for the loan interest rate and the minting is going to be particularly strong if you have access to gold this is actually a big priority if you have access to gold central banking will also critically allow you to bankroll countries so it will allow you to expand your market and also take on debt Realism will allow you to switch your arts academies um, to being owned by more capitalists than aristocrats, which is going to increase the investment pool transfer. And so I think that this is going to be good specifically because it's swapping ownership, which is generally more of a production uh, PM thing. And so if you have a lot of arts academies, realism is going to be good. Also, the PM is just more efficient as well.
Modern sewage, it's basically going to give you more infrastructure. It's kind of always pretty medium. Um, you know, it's like never terrible. And if you're trying to finish out a lot of the tier two techs and there's a bunch of worthless ones that, like these ones down here, you're always going to be going modern sewage first. Dialectics unlocks a better PM for the universities. And it also gives you... What's the other thing it gives you? Let's jump in and take a look what the other thing Dialectics gives you. Oop, we're going to do the scene so you can see. It also gives you plus max, edu max education investment, which is quite strong, but often at this phase in the game, you're not necessarily pushing the institutions as much as possible. So this effect is kind of discounted and it's gonna unlock philosophy department for, for university. Um, it's okay if you have a lot of universities, but the problem is early game, you're really focused on expanding the construction and less so on this sort of thing. And so it's going to be, you know, maybe not as useful, but it's still like one you research before all the useless ones, right? Labor movement is very similar. It allows you to pass uh, the child protection law, and it also gives you access to a couple other things, but the main one is the child protection law, which is going to increase your max education uh, level as well. Nationalism gives you some authority and allows you to go ethnostate. Ethnostate's pretty bad, and the authority is not very good, but this will also unlock um, certain journal entries for a variety of nations, as well as allow for nation formation types of things. And so conditionally, you want to go nationalism a little bit early, but uh, overall, it's not very good. You know, it's at the bottom of C tier here. In D tier, we have law enforcement. Law enforcement doesn't lead to anything. It actually unlocks one of the better laws because it unlocks... Um, what is it, a uh, dedicated police force? But I think for the most part, you're going to be trying to input other institutions first, and you just want to let law enforcement spread to you. It's not that it's a bad law, it's just you're almost never letting it not not spread to you. So, uh, mass communication just gives you 10% authority at a time of the game when it's not particularly useful. You should be almost never researching this. It's hard to imagine a situation. In fact, let's just quickly explain why 10% authority is also not particularly good, because Anytime you're just like just shy of the amount of authority you need kind of early on in the game, you can just increase the government wages and get a little bit extra authority so that you can swap on whatever and then you just come back down and then you incur a little malice, which is going to give opposition group di uh, disapproval uh, based on the deficit as a percentage of your total authority pie. When you have an enormous authority pie, which you generally have at the start of the game, uh, this deficit or this opposition interest group approval is going to be next to nothing. And so you just deal with it with this instead of trying to research a tech just for 10%. It doesn't make much sense. It's not very good. So you shouldn't do it. Next, we have pharmaceuticals, which unlocks um, two of the laws for health insurance, which is not an institution you want to be putting in at the time when you can research this. Same thing for medical degrees, giving you religious, uh, the religious one, charity hospitals, and then private and public uh, health insurance. You'll not be putting these in at the phase of the game where you unlock them, so it's not useful for that, and they give increased uh, level, and so you're not going to research them for that, and perhaps these should be even lower here, but the reason that you get both of these is so you can research quinine. Um, for psychiatric, it gives you increased tax capacity for population, I think, or population-based tax capacity. This would be okay on really high population states, except for the problem being all the really high population states are generally technologically backward, and you want to be focused on other things because you have a lot of production tech to research. And you also have to, you know, be researching stuff that allows you to go, like, currency standards so you can go per capita taxation. And so you just generally never research psychiatry. International relations, almost every country starts with anyways. You have to be hyper backward to not, not start with it. And what it allows for is alliances, defensive packs, and rivalries. At the phase of the game when you can research it, the rivalries aren't very useful for increasing the max amount of... Um, what is it, uh, uh, influence you can use? And then you're not gonna really be getting alliances and defense packs, it's pretty useless. Organized sports gives you 10% prestige. This almost never like feels like it bumps you to the next zone. And perhaps I'm not uh, looking at it closely enough when I'm thinking of researching stuff, but you just generally, you go organize sports so that you can progress to tier three. This is why you go organize sports. And finally, we have romanticism, which unlocks arts academies. This is a PM or a tech that um, I am very openly saying that I think it could be good, but I just think it's actually bad uh, because your auto queue will build a ton of arts academies. Uh, at the start of the game with the initial PM, these are owned, um, or a lot of, a large share of the ownership is aristocrat based, but it's also intelligentsia. And so this is why I'm having a hard time evaluating it. 
Uh, capitalists will contribute more to the investment pool. Uh, it also unlocks greener grass uh, uh, campaigns, which is an okay decree. And it also unlocks agrarianism, which is not very good. And so romanticism, I think, because you don't want your auto queue building a bunch of arts academies, I think romanticism is bad because it lets your arts, uh, your auto queue build arts academies. And so as a consequence, I just, I think romanticism is actively bad, but with an asterisk that uh, I'm willing to accept that I might be horribly wrong in this uh, evaluation. Uh, this is the one I'm least certain about, but as it stands, my current evaluation is that it's just ne a negative tech that you don't want it. And you kind of sometimes, if you are building a ton of arts academies because you got romanticism early and the autocube built a ton, then that makes realism better because it kind of improves your arts academies. Specifically, it also allows you to completely remove the aristocratic element if you want with the uh, private, uh, what's called, uh, the whatever the, the final PM on that is. Anyways, uh, this has been a full tier list. I hope you enjoyed. Um, we kind of just went through it. Uh, generally speaking, I'd just like to reiterate that um, as a whole, uh, society tech is generally kind of better in the mid game. And so like the tier three and four society tech tend to be really good. And so a lot of these are kind of it's looking overall like a bit lower uh, a tier list than the production tech because the production tech tends to be extremely strong early on and i think it's the most s tier stuff uh is in production tech early on um but currency standards very strong and colonization and kunai are both very strong um generally you're going to find contexts where each of these techs is going to be good and it's going to vary a lot from play to play and so this is kind of probably the most interesting tier list but here we have it if you like this video feel free to like comment or subscribe uh do the youtube algorithm stuff it helps me out and if you've been sitting an extended period of time um you know getting the blood flow is good for your health it's good for your brain the shearing force on uh, the capillaries helps to uh, clear the clear those out basically um recent study bit interesting anyways consider taking a walk and have a good one